We live in an hour that has invented new ways to make people feel unimportant. Disposable, replaceable. There's never been a stranger reality than the one that I discovered one day of who is the modern Pharisees. The Pharisees were bad dudes. They were wealthy at the expense of the people. They had made a covenant with evil with Herod and with the Romans. And out of the three, it was the Romans that had the most conscience. Herod didn't. Pharisees didn't. And so one day, I began to look and I saw something. And I'm going to read you something and I'm going to ask for it to be put on the screen. When Tucker Carlson left Fox News and went on X and he began to speak out, I wanted to hear what he had to say. And I'm going to preach on something he said because you need to hear this. Our nation has been taken over by interests that are evil and wrong. And the information you're getting is a lie. And it's time for you to hear the truth. Because let me remind you what Jesus said. He said you will know the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So in this that I'm going to read, and we do have it to put on the screen, is that right? In the note? Great. In a moment, we're going to put it up there, and I want to tell you that in this long thing, I'm going to, it's not that long, in this thing I'm going to read, the point of it is that you will know the truth. And I'm going to tell you, Washington, D.C., you look at me, you devils in Washington. You listen to the man of God. Where you're being attacked in your life is coming from all directions, ladies and gentlemen. The devil has sent false prophets in the church to distract them from what the church needs to be doing. But I'm going to look at you and tell you the church didn't vote. And they didn't vote because they were listening to prophets who said he's going to win, he's going to win, he's going to win. And you didn't feel like you had to work. What the true prophet would have said is, look, the fix is in. And if you're going to deal with a football team, and thank you, YouTube, for being mad at me, and thank you, Facebook, for being mad at me. But I've got to obey God and not worry about you. Now, look. The fix was in. But say you're a football team. And you know the referees have been paid. In America, the referees have been paid. And so, you know they're going to cheat and give you bad calls. But if you score enough points, it's not going to matter. But when you've got pastors up there saying, stay out of politics, and your vote doesn't count, we've got doomsday people that say, oh, this system is so broken, your vote doesn't count. Shut up with that. Every believer has got to register and vote. I want to read what Tucker Carlson said. The undeniably big topics, the ones that will define our future, get virtually no discussion at all. War civil liberties, emerging science, demographic change, corporate power, natural resources. When was the last time you heard a legitimate debate about any of those issues? Debates like that are not permitted in American media. Both political parties and their donors have reached consensus on what benefits them 
and they actively collude to shut down any conversation about it. Our current orthodoxies won't last. They're brain dead. Nobody actually believes them. Hardly anyone's life is improved by them. This moment is too inherently ridiculous to continue, and it won't. The people in charge know this. That is why they're hysterical and aggressive. They're afraid. They've given up persuasion and are resorting to force. But it won't work. When honest people say what's true, calmly and without embarrassment, they become powerful. At the same time, the liars who've been trying to silence them shrink. They become weaker. That's the iron law of the universe. True things prevail. I want to make a prediction. In the Bible, it says in the fourth chapter of John, verse 35, look at me. You say there are yet four months, and then comes the harvest. But I say to you, look to the fields. Vast numbers of human souls are ripening. And he said, pray the Lord of the harvest, that he send laborers into the harvest. Do you know that hardly any pastors that are from Winston-Salem itself participated in this crusade? Most of them came from outside. And I'm going to tell you something, as a man of God, because I get in to leave town real quick. I feel like a high school senior after he got his diploma and he's still in the classroom. I'm about to let the teacher know what I really think. Is anybody here? Can I get an amen? How can you watch a tent full every night? Healings occurring and souls being saved and not become a part of it. But the real danger is not that pastor. It's not Washington, D.C. It's not even the media. It's you and me refusing to admit what is actually going on and what we must do now. Somebody said amen.